Good evening, folks. It's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a coronavirus update Sunday, March 15th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. The CDC is now recommending suspending gatherings of 50 or more people for the entire world for the next eight weeks. And as far as the U.S. is concerned, Atlanta mayor just declared a state of emergency in the wake of this. California, Ohio, and Illinois, including Massachusetts, are closing bars and restaurants in an effort to slow the coronavirus. And it's about time. New York City parents hail the school closures, but rip de Blasio over how long it took. As we wait for the opening of the Dow in just 10 hours, the futures are already down quite a bit. Let's refresh this and let's see the reality of it all. This has been on hold for 40 minutes. Let's see if there's any change. Okay, it's holding strong, but still opening down 4.5% is going to be big news. And then there's this. Breaking tonight, chaos at America's airports. Travelers rushing home, worried about President Trump's new European travel ban. Images health officials would rather not be seen. You see it here, hundreds of travelers crowded on top of each other at Chicago's O'Hare Airport awaiting medical screenings. The president today defending the process. Here's ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi. Tonight, the nation's biggest airports thrown into chaos as enhanced coronavirus screenings cause massive delays through customs. At Chicago's O'Hare, thousands of people returning to the U.S. herded on escalators going nowhere. Long, winding lines. Now, first of all, this should not be happening. There should not be large groups of people. Take a look at this. Do you know how many people, if there's a single person infected in here, is in how many people they're infecting? But I digress. Through customs. At Chicago's O'Hare, thousands of people returning to the U.S. herded on escalators going nowhere. Long, winding lines at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, travelers standing shoulder to shoulder, some waiting up to seven hours, all at a time when Americans are being urged to keep their distance from one another. Uh, through customs and then another line to uh, uh, CDC where I had my temperature taken. The federal government rushing to implement President Trump's restrictions on travel from 28 European countries, now including the United Kingdom and Ireland. 15-year-old Liam Elliott, who's returning from Switzerland to Virginia, says everyone was in close proximity. Was anyone handing out masks or any kind of protective uh, equipment? No. Illinois' governor slamming the president on Twitter, calling the lines unacceptable. Chicago's mayor pleading for help. We need more screeners here at O'Hare, and they need them at other airports across the country. President Trump responding late today, asking people to, quote, pardon the interruptions and delays, adding, quote, it is very important that we be vigilant and careful. All right, Mona joins. Well, first of all, this was neither vigilant or careful bringing these people back. There were not enough uh, screeners in place. There were no rules in place to keep people at safe distance. It was a shit show. Just now live from Dulles Airport, one of the 13 U.S. airports where Americans can return home from Europe. And Mona, what are officials saying about the possibility of restricting travel within the U.S.? Tom, Dr. Anthony Fauci said domestic travel restrictions have not been seriously discussed and are not in the immediate future. But he did add the administration remains open minded. Just last night, President Trump told Americans, if you don't have to travel, quote, I wouldn't do it. Tom? Mona Kosar Abdi for us tonight. Mona, thank you. So this is coming out from France and it's very important. And I want to share some tips and tricks that may help you survive COVID-19. I want to share with you some, maybe some things that can help you prevent it and some things that will help you not exacerbate it. And the exacerbation here is the anti-inflammatories that may aggravate COVID-19. France is advising not to take any anti-inflammatories. Now, what I see on the shelves where I live is that they're, all of the acetaminophen and all the anti-inflammatories are sold out. So there are millions of Americans that have hoarded these products. While French authorities have warned that the wide use of over-the-counter anti-inflammatory drugs may worsen the coronavirus. The country's health minister, Olivier Revian, who is a qualified doctor and neurologist, tweeted on Saturday, 
the taking of anti-inflammatories, including ibuprofen, cortisone, and the like, could be a factor in aggravating the infection. In the case of fever, take paracetamol instead of ibuprofen. If you're already taking anti-inflammatory drugs, ask your doctor's advice. Health officials point out that anti-inflammatory drugs are known to be a risk for those with infectious disease because they tend to diminish the response of the body's immune system. So that's a big he heads up. Paracetamol is the only safe alternative to fever, not anti-inflammatories. And this coming out three weeks ago being withheld from the mainstream is a simple treatment for coronavirus with intravenous vitamin C. Now, the people working on this have been using this protocol in China for quite some time. It was published in the Orthomolecular uh, Journal of Biology here. Large, timely vitamin C is an important option for the treatment of the new coronavirus. And here are the associated doctors. Now, I'm bringing this to your attention because here we have a video from Dr. Cheng who is a U.S. board certified specialist in anti-aging medicine. And he is also um, the head of the, here it is, the head of the OMNS, Chinese editor Ed, Dr. Chang is reporting about the first approved study of 12,000 to 24,000 milligrams per day of vitamin C by IV. There are other ways that you can take this. You don't need an intravenous. You can drink it in a, a cup of water. So, What's been happening is that intravenous vitamin C is already being employed in China against COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, Chang is receiving regular updates because he's part of the Medical and Scientific Advisory Board to the International Intravenous Vitamin C China Epidemic Medical Support Team and is Director Richard Zhang, MD, PhD, Associate Director in Hong Zhang, PhD. Uh, among the other team members are those that are writing this paper. And all you need is a translator to read it because it's in Chinese. And you can read about the large, timely vitamin C is an important option. I'm also going to leave you the English video on how to take vitamin C to prevent COVID-19 infection. It's that simple. I'll also leave you a paper that I found um, on PubMed on vitamin C and immune function. Now, it's very important that you research all of these protocols because it can. there are some side effects like diarrhea, and you want to eliminate um, that type of side effect if you actually catch COVID-19. You don't want to become super dehydrated. So there's a proper way to take large doses of vitamin C. And the video here that I'll leave you links below called How to Take Vitamin C in Prevention of COVID-19 will tell you exactly how to do that. It's time, folks, to be prepared and not scared. You need to do all the top five things. Wash your hands. Don't shake hands. Stay in a good distance from people. Don't travel if you don't need to. Do not go around uh, strangers or other people if you don't need to, especially the elderly or the sick. And most importantly, be prepared, not scared. We love each and every one of you. I hope you got something out of the video. COVID-19 is a problem. It's a big problem. According to the numbers, it will not peak until the end of April in the U.S., which means that there could be millions of people infected and the numbers that you'll be receiving will be extremely diminished. For the average person who's healthy and prepared and who's doing all the protocols to keep uh, the virus at bay and not getting themselves sick because young, healthy people may be asymptomatic and just be passing this disease on. The majority of people will all be fine. There's nothing to worry about. What you need to worry about is your civil liberties disappearing over the next two weeks. Government's taking control of your stockpiles. And this could be happening while we're all on lockdown. I hope you're watching. Stay tuned to the show for more updates and be safe. We love you, each and every one of you. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And be safe.